Welcome to our module on what is PR. PR is the art of building and maintaining a reputation and should sit alongside your marketing strategy. So while you might advertise a sale or an event, the PR around it is what will inevitably persuade people to come and it's much cheaper too. Let's take an event as an example. You want to sell tickets and get people through the door. So you book an advert in the local press create an event on Facebook and ensure there's a ticket line on Eventbrite, but the tickets won't sell themselves. While the advert and the Facebook event might raise awareness, what plans do you have in place to build the reputation of the event beforehand and get bums on seats? That's where a PR strategy comes in. You might look to do a feature in the local press about your event and what makes it stand out. You might create a couple of blogs about the reason you're organising it and you might run a Facebook competition to win tickets. Say it's a craft fair. Why not collaborate with one of your sellers for a prize draw or raffle on the day and ask them to promote it to their audience in advance? There are lots of ways to get people talking about your business and that's the key to successful PR. It's not what you say about yourself, it's what others say about you. It's about starting and maintaining conversations. And yes, there is such a bad thing as bad publicity, but we'll come onto that later this month. So, as I mentioned, I have a slightly different approach to my PR strategies and plans, and I break it down into five principles. In your strategy, you'll outline the ways that you'd like to approach each principle this year and when it comes down to planning we'll break them down even further. You might only use three of the five for one plan and all five for another depending on who your audience is and what you're trying to achieve. Over the course of the year we'll look at each principle in more detail and they will all weave in and out of the course over the time. We've already touched on them all without really thinking about it. So let's have a look at a bit more about them. By traditional PR, I mean working with news outlets such as newspapers and magazines to build your reputation. It might be through listings, features, news or reviews, but usually means targeting a slightly older or middle class market, especially if you're working with the locals. Digital media is the generation of online content from working with bloggers and online platforms to writing your own content and publishing it. Having a blog on your website is a great way of generating your own content as you're in control of what's published. And this is where PR and SEO cross over. If you can get links to your site from reputable outlets such as the national newspapers, then the Google bots will be happy. And if you regularly update your website with blogs or by tweaking the content slightly, the Google bots will be happy. Google sets the stage for SEO and I'm hoping to get an SEO expert on during our website topic to chat about it in a little bit more detail. I also count TripAdvisor as a digital platform rather than a social one. We'll cover it in detail later in the month, but it should be a vital part of your PR strategy. We've got a whole month of social media PR coming up, but it's really important that you at least have accounts on each platform, even if you don't use them, just so you can monitor your reputation. For example, you wouldn't want someone to leave you negative feedback on Twitter and not be able to monitor it or respond accordingly. Visitor experience is where tourism PR starts to deviate from other types, but it should be a big part of your PR strategy. If people have a good time, they will tell their friends, leave positive reviews and generally tell the whole world how awesome you are. Even if it's just a particularly Instagrammable breakfast, it's still great PR for your business. Social and digital media has, rightly or wrongly, made us all critics and it has raised the bar for visitor experience. But you're all awesome businesses with unique ways of creating a buzz, so I'm not too worried about you. Collaborations come in many shapes and sizes. They can either mean working with a blogger on a series of posts about your business, working with another local business to create a package, or even with a professional service such as me or a photographer. 
Basically, it means working with and supporting another business so that you're reaching their audience as well as your own. Which is why it's important to think about who you collaborate with. For example, you wouldn't collaborate with a fashion blogger if you want to reach a middle class older market, but you might collaborate with a travel blogger or a family blogger whose demographics complement your audience. Or why not collaborate with a local pub or cafe to offer a discount to each other's businesses, such as 10% off using code XYZ. If you're a cafe, find a B&B or a campsite to collaborate with. There are lots of options. Which brings me to the end of this intro, but keep reading for this month's task. Thank you.